Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on this Friday, April 1st. Live from the Beasley Media Complex in Boone, this is the Appalachian Weekly News. I'm Zanar Marine Lopez. And I'm Shannon Pendleton. We begin our newscast today with the announcement that the Board of Trustees approved a plan for a new parking deck on campus. Our correspondent, Sydney Gladwell, is live from the location of that parking de deck. Sydney, what can you tell us? Thank you, Shannon and Zanira. The spot I'm standing at right now next to Holmes Convocation Center received a $20 million investment last Friday when App State's Board of Trustees approved a motion to build a new 600 space parking deck. But a local activist group has some concerns about the direction App State development is heading. With the new dorms on West Side nearly complete and the university beginning construction on a new innovation district this year, it's safe to say App State's campus is growing and upgrading at a fast rate. These advancements worry the App State students, faculty, and Boone residents that make up Climact, an organization that is urging the university to reprioritize their budget to meet the community's needs in a sustainable way. That could be making our current academic buildings more safe, our dorms more habitable, um, more sustainable, more efficient. The university more and more is just seeming like a corporation that's trying to grow and like you're not considering the needs of the people, the students, the faculty, the community, then who are you considering? Associate Vice Chancellor for Facilities Management Nick Caters is the man behind the parking deck project. He says Climact and the university are on the same side. There has been massive outcry for additional parking on campus. The idea is with putting parking decks in is so that we can continue to grow within some of the spaces that we have left. So the parking deck will actually replace other spaces where development is going on. In the long term, it is more sustainable for the student body to have more places to park. The site for the deck has been approved since 2014, but the university decided the resources would be better spent on other campus projects. The investment is still awaiting UNC Board of Governors approval, but construction is set to begin this fall and should be completed by the following year. For the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Sydney Gladwell. Let's get back to you guys in the studio. Thank you for that update, Sydney. According to the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, nine North Carolinians died each day from drug overdoses in 2020. This is a 40% increase from the previous year tolling to 3,304 deaths. NCDHHS is working to reverse this trend. They are implementing the North Carolina Opioid and Substance Use Action Plan. This plan is aimed, at, aimed to prevent addiction, reduce harm from sus, substance use, and connect people to substance use services along with housing and employment support. They believe this increase is due to the pandemic related to the increase in alcohol consumption and substance abuse. They also say more adults are reporting anxiety and depression symptoms. Over 70% of overdose deaths most likely involved illicit manufactured fentanyl, often combined with other substances. For more information about effective ways to prevent and respond to overdoses, you can visit ncopioidsettlement.org. It's the first day of April, so you can prepare your home with those April showers with a few tips from the town of Boone. Make sure you know how to shut off the electricity and gas in your property. Keep a list of emergency contacts and have your insurance policies and valuable papers in a safe place, just to name a few. The Town of Boone website has all of this advice and more with FEMA-produced information available at the Watauga County Library, Town Hall, and the Planning and Inspections Office. You should also know if you are living in a flood hazard area. You can call Planning and Inspections at 828-268-6960 to ask or if you have any other questions. Our correspondent, Dylan Henson, has the, with the Boone housing crisis. Dylan, what more can you tell us? Thanks, Anar and Shannon. It is no secret that Boone suffers from a housing shortage and even affordable housing. This week, I took a look at the housing crisis that is plaguing the high country. Imagine this. You have lived in Boone for many years, leasing apartments, looking for affordable housing, and you notice the same thing being done every time. Rental agencies taking advantage of the housing shortage that Boone has suffered from for many years. That's why many community members here in the high country have expressed their anger through social media and forums put together by local nonprofits. Carrie Gregg, a longtime Boone resident and registered nurse, shares her story. 
I moved to Boone about 10 years ago um, uh, during a recession, basically. Um, and housing was expensive for us during the recession, um, but we were still paying a lot less than people are paying now. And I've seen just people posting on Facebook um, some of these outrageous rental prices. Um, I lived in a two bedroom townhouse with one and a half bath um, in the year probably 2012. Um, and I paid 750 a month for that. And I believe that that same townhouse is double this year. Um, I know that's been, you know, 10 years ago, but still it just is worrisome to see. Housing in Boone is not easy to find. Many people find themselves in a place where they have to apply for a year, at least in advance, to obtain affordable housing. I reached out to seven rental agencies here in the high country, and they all declined to speak with me. Patrick Arsborne, a newcomer to, to Otago County, shares his story and perspective as a remote worker. So yeah, I've been uh, living on my own in Boone um, as a remote worker for a major retailer for the past couple of months now. Um, my experience is uh, with with Boone rental agencies is pretty uh, pretty limited, but the experience I've had so far is kind of generally um, you know, negative, as as is a lot of um, you know other people's experiences here in Boone. Um, you know, mainly with with things like uh, it just feels like the rental agencies have uh, you know quite a bit more control, and they're in positions of power, and they exercise that power to a degree that um, maybe. Uh, putting uh, young people and students uh, in an unfair position. Now, if you are angry or upset with the housing in Boone, you're not the only one. The Hospitality House is hosting two events that you can attend that will allow community members to share their frustrations on housing issues and provide key local housing data to high country residents. The first event will be on Monday, April 11th, and this forum will cover affordability. The second event will be on Monday, April 25th, and this will cover potential solutions to the housing crisis. about these events, you can visit www.watagahousingforum.org. And remember to sign up for these events because these, these things fill up really quickly. And reporting for the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Dylan Henson. Back to you guys in the studio. A musicology professor at App State received the 20, 2000, 2022 University of North Carolina Board of Governors Excellence in Teaching Award. Dr. Reeves Stolstad, who works in the Hayes School of Music, will receive a cash reward of $12,500. She will receive this award during App State Spring 2022 commencement at, on May 6. Well, it's really an honor to be among the other people that won the award this year. My other colleagues that have won this award in the past, I have a great deal of respect for, for my colleague, uh, Victor Mancher, to nominate me. Um, and then all of the beautiful letters that my colleagues wrote for me in support and um, 10, 10 students wrote letters in support um, of my application as well. I, I just really appreciated them doing that for me. When Scholstad was a student at Florida State University, one of her professors taught her a teaching technique that involves a constant process of improvement. She adapts her courses to current events and cultural trends. Not only is Schulstadt a professor, she also serves as an inclusive excellence coordinator at the Center of Academic Excellence. Customers at the Spruce Pine Walmart should be careful on their next grocery run. One employee, Jerrica Carpenter, grew suspicious of those inside a white van reading New House Day of Prayer. She claims various men would leave the van at different times and purchase some items in Walmart routinely. After asking her friends who recognized the van and also had suspicions, Jerrica reported the situation to her manager and police officers inside the Walmart. The Spruce Pine Police Department released a statement on Facebook last Thursday regarding the incidents. They said after receiving several messages about what people have seen, they've spoken to all parties involved and that the situation has been resolved. Spruce Pine Police continues to encourage the public to report any suspicious activity. Now that the mask mandate has been lifted for a while, there has been some questions about whether COVID cases would stay down. Our correspondent, Dalen Mickel, looked at where we are with COVID since these changes. It has been about three weeks since students have returned to Boone from spring break, and the effects are rather surprising. With students having time to settle down since spring break ended, there have been some changes around campus and in the classroom. I talked to Professor Carlos Montero to see what he has noticed as a professor. Oh, it's been much, much better. I mean, it's, 
they are much more relaxed, even those in some classes, some students, they want to wear the mask, and we understand that perfectly well. They want to play safe, and it makes sense, but it's especially in the classes I teach, like broadcast performance, TV news reporting, it's nice to see their faces, to see the expression, to see how they talk on camera. So that in my case, with the classes I teach, that was something fantastic, the, the, the mask, to don't have a mask, because that covered the whole face, you know. By visiting the school's COVID-19 dashboard, you can see that over the past three weeks, only five positive cases have emerged after the two weeks prior, there were zero cases. These are the lowest numbers the campus of App State has seen all year. I would say maybe 30%, 30% of the students, they, they, they want to wear the mask, and of course we understand it, and we keep our distance, you know, we, we follow the protocol, but I would say 30%, yeah, between 25 and 30% of the students, they're still wearing a mask. While some students around Boone are still wearing masks and others are not, App Healthcare announced that beginning today, April 1st, the testing process will be changing. This includes no more drive-through visits, and they would like you to call App Healthcare to schedule a sick visit. Students and faculty are still being cautious about the virus. While we are able to take our masks off, please look out for others and do your due diligence to keep you and everyone else safe. With the Appalachia Weekly News, I'm Dayla Mickle. The App State football team doesn't just leave their work on the field. Yesterday, the Mountaineer men hosted a blood drive in partnership with the Community Engaged Leadership Office. The rainy day didn't stop them from giving back and volunteering their time. At the Holmes Convocation Center, both football players and members of the community donated their blood to the Red Cross. This was their last blood drive for the month of March, and blood drive organizer Wes Haynes talks about why this is so important. Absolutely, this blood drive is super critical for us for the month. So this is the last day of the month and we're always looking at things for how the month does. And so we needed to strive to come out here to successful to hit our numbers and we're happy to say we've already hit our numbers for the month. So everything else for the rest of the blood drive is gravy. But this drive is a large drive for us. We've got a lot of resources, a lot of time into it. And we're hoping to see the spring drive grow into kind of something more similar to what we do in the fall where we collect almost twice as much then. The Office of Sustainability is hosting a creek cleanup today. The cleanup will take place from 4 to 6 p.m. The meeting location will be at the Appalachian Mountain Brewery, and they ask you to please be there at 3.30 to pick up supplies and hear the instructions. It's the Boone Creek cleanup at A and B. It's the 1st of April and the 15th of April from 3.30 to 6 o'clock. Super exciting, and we're hoping to clean up Boone Creek because that creek right there, most of the trash comes from like 321 or Blowing Rock Road. And with the wind and all the storms that we've been having recently, it's disgusting. Like I saw pictures of it earlier today and it's nasty. And so it's cool because we're working with the town of Boone as well. So they donated the bags to us. And when we're done picking up all the trash, then they are going to come through and pick up all the bags for us. If you have any questions, you can call 828-263-1111. If you can't make it to this creek cleanup, don't worry. There will be another one hosted on April 15th. If you're looking for a weekend activity, this Saturday happens to be the 42nd annual Blowing Rock Trout Derby. Celebrate the beginning of the trout season at the beginning of sunrise by catching some fish. There is no entry fee or registration required, but you must have a fishing license. Children under 11 and those with disabilities will fish at Broyhill Park's Mayview Lake, where you don't need a license. If this doesn't apply to you, you must catch your fish from any of the Watauga County public trout waters. Turn in your catch of the day before 4.30 for a chance at some prizes. Do you enjoy coffee and running? If so, you can join NTAP for the annual Coffee Buzz 5K. This event is taking place tomorrow at 10 a.m. The 5K will be both online and in person. The in-person run will be located at Durham Park. They ask if you're doing the online 5K to donate a minimum of $25. And the in-person registration fee is also $25. This annual Coffee Buzz 5K is to raise money for the Landon Hill Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is for students who are studying abroad to transform their experiences. Landon Hill was an NTAP member who passed away after catching bacterial meningitis while studying abroad in Spain during fall of 2011. Hill was a runner and enjoyed his coffee, so NTAP thought there'd be no better way than to honor. I think it's really, really nice that we're doing this. Um, this is our 10th anniversary, and so, the reason why we do this is because um, one of our students many years ago um, passed away while studying abroad 
and so he was really passionate about uh, helping people and he was in global studies I think um, and so uh, whoever was in INTA back in the day uh, was trying to find a way to like keep his memory alive. If you're interested in registering for the Coffee Buzz 5K, you can register at intap.appstate.edu backslash coffee-buzz-5k. There is now a spot in Boone for your favorite Mexican treats. At 196 Boone Heights Drive near Los Arcoiris is Melanie's Antojitos Fruit Bar. Named after the owner's nine-month-old daughter, Melanie's Antojitos offers aguas frescas, diablitos, mangonadas, and more. Some special items on their menu offered are a maruchan loca made with ramen noodles and an esquites with hot Cheetos. The same owners also own Venus Salon and Barbershop on the 105 extension. We're opening Melanie's Antojitos Fruit Shop. We're really excited to have you guys and join us. We sell paletas, fresh fruit, frijas con crema, chicharrón preparado, esquites, and we just want to invite everyone to stop by and give us a try. Are you interested in being a part of the Appalachian Football Club? If so, you can t participate by sponsoring a player. A few perks of sponsoring a, a player for the upcoming season are four season seats, four jerseys, invitations to exclusive team events, marketing of your player sponsorship on websites, social media, and PA announcements, so social events and dinners with your sponsored player, and a player appearance with your sponsored player at a business or community event of your choice. All right, so uh, we've started a new program this season with Appalachian FC. It's the sponsor a player program, um, which I think is going to be really cool. Uh, gives you a chance, uh, the community, a chance to kind of become closer to uh, one of the players of your choice. Um, I think the pricing starts at $1,000. Uh, for general admission, you get four season seats with that, uh, $1,500, and you get field side uh, season tickets with that, four of those. If you would like to sponsor one of the players on the Appalachian Football Club, you can go to www.appalachianfc.com. Coming up on the Appalachian Weekly News, App State Baseball looks to extend its win streak. Hi, neighbor. I'm Ryan Perone. And I'm Elena Jones. Join us every Tuesday at 10 a.m. as we explore the events, organizations, and people that make the high country so special. You can tune in on Channel 198 for Spectrum customers, Channel 20 or 1020 for SkyBest customers, or Channel 23-3 on campus. Also, make sure to follow us at Instagram at high underscore neighbor app TV for up-to-date coverage of events happening and student-made content. Until then, bye, bye neighbor. neighbor. Welcome back to a brand new smack dab season of App TV's own queer oriented show, Can't Think Straight. I'm Nate. And I'm Harriet. We'll be here to make you laugh and think as we combine comedy and education on Can't Think Straight. The show premieres Fridays at 9 p.m. You can tune in on WatchAppTV.com or on YouTube, Channel 198 for Spectrum customers, Channel 20 or 1020 for SkyBus customers, and Channel 23-3 on campus. Also be sure to check out our Instagram at Can't Think Straight at TV. We can't wait to see you there. Bye. Bye. The football season's over, but we are far from done. With basketball picking up in March Madness right around the corner, catch all your App State national sports news on Charter Cable Channel 198 and on YouTube at App TV. Let's have a great year and roll nears. Ah, memories. A sweet retrospective look at the past. However, the past has, well, passed. And now, a new and better crew looks toward the horizon and marches toward Appalachian State head on. This spring, look toward App Avenue on App TV to see a new legacy be written on random days of the week. No, seriously, this show will literally be airing any day of the week, so stay glued to those screens. We'll see you out there. Appalachian Avenue! So, Zanira, did you see that awesome baseball win earlier this week? I didn't, Shannon, but I know someone who can tell us more. Alex, what have you got for sports this week? 
App State men's baseball team is currently on a two-game win streak after securing an 11-1 victory against UNC Asheville on Tuesday. Senior pitcher Jason Cornatcher played a key role against the Bulldogs, going four innings, allowing just one run on one hit, striking out six in the process. The Mountaineers return to action this weekend in a three-game series against Texas State. The Bobcats are currently 5-1 in the conference, but are entering the game off a 9-12 loss to Sam Houston. You can watch App State take on Texas State tonight at 6 at Beaver Field or on ESPN+. On to the women's side of the pitch, App State softball is preparing for their weekend series against rivals Georgia Southern. The Mountaineers entered the series off a loss against UNC Chapel Hill on Wednesday, falling 4-8. App State will kick off the series today at 3 p.m. at home at the Lloyd Family Stadium. The App State men's golf team returns to action this weekend at the Irish Creek Collegiate at Canonapolis, North Carolina. They will enter the competition after finishing 9th out of 14th at the Seahawk Intercollegiate this past Monday at UNC Wilmington. Sophomore Severe Harrison led the Mountaineers with a 28th place finish. The Mountaineers will compete tomorrow and Sunday at the Irish Creek Collegiate. As for App State women's golf team, they return to action this upcoming Monday and Tuesday at the Mimosa Hills Intercollegiate hosted at Morganton, North Carolina. Last time out, they finished 15th out of 17 earlier this week at the Any Given Tuesday Intercollegiate. The Mimosa Hills Intercollegiate will be the Mountaineers' final camp competition before the Sun Belt Championship, so they'll be hoping to get a good result to enter the championship on a high. Switching over to the racetrack, both App State men and women's track and field teams will be comp competing at the Vert Class A meeting at High Point University today and tomorrow. Last week, App State men's track and field team competed at the Weems Baskin Meet in Columbia, South Carolina, where they had multiple top eight finishes. They had a strong finish in pole vaulting, with junior Patrick Feeming placing third with a height of 4.88 meters, and sophomore duo Taylor Fox and Brandon Underwood tying at fifth with a height of 4.58 meters. The women's track and field team also competing at the Weems Baskin last week, with some distant runners also competing at the Raleigh Relays. Junior Jada Branch won the triple jump event with a leap of 12.68 meters. Junior Taylor Smith placed second place in the long jump invite with a mark of 5.80 meters. Both the men and women's track and field teams will aim to continue their strong performances into the Vert Class A meet this weekend. That's all I have for sports this week. Zanira, Shannon, back to you. Thank you, Alex. And now it's time for your High Country High Note. A local Boone resident is receiving the help she needs to build her new home from an App State organization. Our correspondent Stephen Biddix has more. In just a few months, all of this empty land will turn into a home for local Boone resident Kim Paterno. She said this is life changing what is happening and it is all thanks to App Builds a Home, a student run organization here on campus. I was totally, totally blown away and humbled that through the end of it that I, I was chosen. App Built a Home is a student-led organization on Appalachian State's campus to help build safe, affordable housing for local residents. Kim Paterno, a six-year local, is next in line to be a part of this program. We had a give-back day, so we did a woman's build. In fact, we helped on that house right there. So in that time, I asked, you know, because I didn't know much about it, um, how, how do you get one of these homes? So they told me, and I thought, could probably apply, you know, and they said apply. Kim applied shortly after and is still amazed that she was chosen. You know, I never would have thought at my age that I'd be working at a hardware store. Um, I would never have this opportunity to have a safe environment to live in, uh, a safe home to live in. Um, but they've given me that opportunity, you know, at my age to be able to help someone like me uh, have something that's secure that, that I'll be able to have is unreal. Kim also feels that there is a big misconception on how this program works. It's somebody had said, you know, I don't support it because people need to work hard. And it's like, wow, you know, I, I work very hard. Um, so it's not about that. I think, or people think you get a free home and you don't, you know, we're paying for the house. To continue to help Kim, App Builds a Home will be hosting their first ever Spirit Week. This is what we hope to become our first annual from the ground up App Builds a Home Spirit Week. So this week is about fundraising money. We are at $46,000 of our $50,000 goal. 
for Kim's home. But this is also just about spreading awareness about the need for safe and affordable housing in Watauga County. And if you would like to get involved, you may not be able to drive the excavator, but as Mackenzie mentioned, App Builds a Home is hosting their first ever Spirit Week from April 5th to April 10th. You can also visit the App Builds a Home webpage on the Division of Student Affairs on the App State website. For the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Stephen Biddix. That's a report this week. I'm Zanarmin Lopez. And I'm Shannon Pendleton. From all of us at the Appalachian Weekly News, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.